privilege to be here. Um, thank you, Apostle, for allowing me to be one of the speakers for tonight. Uh, you know, being a pastor's kid, you uh, kind of take advantage or take it for granted that when the minister comes up and speaks the word of God, that, you know, it's like, oh, it's just, you know, this person, or it's just that person, or it's just another Sunday. Uh, but as uh, Elder Melissa was saying, how the word of God is quick and powerful. And that when the word of God is spoken into our lives, it is changing us immediately. It has the power to change us immediately. All right, so that. if there aren't results in our life that we see in the promises and the camels and, and things that we are hoped to happen, uh, we have to check our faith. We have to check our belief. We have to check our attitude because the word of God can change everything immediately and then with, with the word of God it's it's um, wonderful how we we read and we make confessions and um, you know we really believe we, we really believe when you go to that car dealership and um, you've already know that your credit is right and uh, or you may not know um, and uh, or, or you're going to buy something and you know something that, uh, that money is in that account you believe that that money is going to go through you're going to be able to make that purchase because you believe that what, what you have in there is already set for what you want. So when we bring it to the spiritual realm, you know, the, the scriptures have gone forth and, and the word of God has gone forth and, and the confessions are made. We need to believe that, that it's already done, that, that God has already provided for us. God has already had, he has a plan for us and, and everything is working out for our good. If, if briefly... Um, Philippians, and again, Apostle, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you uh, um, allowing me to be up here. Um, Philippians 4, uh, Pastor Malloy came from Philippians 4 and 8, and I was like, stay down there, Pastor Malloy. Don't, don't jump up to my, my scripture. Um, but <laughs> Philippians 4 and verse 6 and 7, um, wow, Pastor Mersaw, if that's what you do when you don't know what to say. I know. Uh, what you do when you do know what to say. Uh, God bless you. What a powerful word. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And uh, briefly, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And, and in 7, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Um, and, and I was, as I was sitting there taking in uh, um, the, the word of God, you know, coming into the new year and into the new building, you know, I'm going to make a confession, and I hope you do the same thing. God, give me a heart and a mind and a will to work. Yes. I want to continue to work. Yes. God talks yes. about work the works of them that is that is set while it is day for when night coming to make the work. It's, it's amazing. We have to work right now. We understand that, you know, right now it's nighttime. And, and you can't do much when it's night, but when it's day, and our day season is here, we have the church, God has blessed us. Uh, you, you have no idea. Uh, churches aren't buying churches right now. Pastors aren't buying churches. They, they are staying exactly where they are because they understand what's going on, and God has made a way for us. He, he has opened the door. Actually, God kicked the door down and said, this is the will of God. Um, if you can look at that picture of what we've got and, and uh, the Washingtonville building, it don't oh even add up. You talk about what I have not seen or ear heard, neither has it entered into, into the heart of man. The things God has prepared for us, that building is nothing that what we thought we were going to get. And we had was looking over here to get this, and God totally just came out of everything and said, I thought you had a friend. But this is what I have for you. And with that blessing, as Apostle has believed, and, and, and we talk about, you know, honoring our pastors, I, I came from, um, and, and not necessarily talking about my mother's church, but my background, a very religious background, where, you know, you had to do this, you had to do that, you know, almost like the, the Catholics, it was just a different form. And uh, being in that type of atmosphere, you know, it, it kind of, I was telling my wife um, last night, they would get up, and they would say, you know, my back is hurting. 
my, my, my right pinky is swollen. Oh, um, you know, uh, my whole right leg on my side, and this is a testimony, and yeah. then end with pray my strength in the Lord. And, you know, I, I, I was like, why are, are, are we, uh, why is all that confession being made about their bodies? And then they're asking for prayer. Well, what we have to do is forgetting those things which are behind. Whatever is, has happened, we're going to forget those things and we're going to press forward. That we're going to look forward. We're going to continue to drive. We're going to confess say that, say things that. that are going to benefit our lives, yeah, yeah. that are going to benefit our business, that are going to benefit our hearts, that is going to benefit our health, that is going to benefit the church, that is going to benefit our workplace, benefit our environment, benefit our community, benefit our leaders in this country, in this church. God has given us a word, and life and death are in the power of our tongue. So whatever we speak, we have. So I would rather speak good things. I would rather think on these good things that, that are in the word of God so that we might live. We want to grow in God. We want to be faithful, not only unto God, but be faithful to our ministry. Well, it was powerful. You, you talk about, you know, a pastor Moore being in the house of God. And, and that's something I really learned here when, when I came. You know, it's not just enough. You know, I mean, granted, it, we have two services a week. Okay? I know churches that have about eight or nine services a week. And um, if you don't make one service, you'll be sat down. And that's all she wrote. Um, so, you know, if you can be faithful with two services a week and make it a point to be in the house of God, it's well worth it. I was looking at our faithfulness. This was a trying time to the church, and we came out of it. We were faithful, and God has blessed us. Now, even what has happened now is not even what is going to happen. What is going to happen is God is going to bless us with new materials. He's going to bless us with free labor, labor of love that is going to come into the house of God. He's going to bless us with equipment and instruments. And we see a blank building, but what we see is not what it is. God is already working in our favor. God is already working in your favor. God is preparing a blessing for you that you might grow and that you might be a blessing to somebody else. So as I wrap this up, I appreciate God. I appreciate new life. I appreciate our leadership, allowing God to use us in every different form. And, and you know, before we left the church, as I end, before we left the church, we were uh, we had a group that would come in and that would clean the church and that would clean the toilets. And I said, you know, at one point, I did murmur, I'm not going to lie, I said, you know what, why do I have to come in and clean the toilets? And, you know, these toilets ain't always the best uh, to clean. Um, you know, and I got to, uh, did, you know, that church, a uh, vacuum in that church, that was, that was something, that was a task. But you know what, I learned in that state to be content. And now, in the new, I can't wait to clean the new building. I can't wait to do anything that I can because God blesses a cheerful giver. Whether it's in your talents or in your money or in anything that you do, God blesses a cheerful giver. So God bless you. Have a great year. Be prosperous. Be fruitful. And we will multiply in everything that we do. In Jesus' name.